It's that time of the year where Valley Fine joins me. We talk about all the amazing things that have been happening in 2021. And we're going to talk about the things that we're thinking coming in 2022. How are you feeling about yes. the game right now? I think it's in a good state. I'm very optimistic right now about where it's going to be. Obviously, there's some problems that's been lingering for a while, but I'm, I'm very optimistic uh, going forward in 2022 with this game. Yeah, so what we're going to talk about today is we're going to talk about the two uh, game modes that were recently added to the game, Pocket Dimension and Avengers Tower. We're going to talk about the upcoming much hype Ooh. grand tournament. Then we're going to talk about the older game modes in the game, the arena, the blitz, the raids, RTA. What can they do to fix them? What can they make them better? Should they leave them alone? Before we do that, let's take a word from our sponsor. Come closer, come closer to the screen. Let me tell you a little secret. you get about a hidden gem. A free hidden gem. Something that costs you nothing, but makes your entire life millions of times better. Also happens to be the greatest mobile game of all time, Raid Shadow Legends. The newest boss just released in Raid is the biggest and craziest yet. This thing is a Hydra with multiple different heads, each one a complete boss battle on its own. Sounds crazy. The head of Blight is all about poison. It poisons you, leeches you, and protects itself with the poison cloud, but makes it super hard to hit. Fortunately, you can kill it with fire. HP burn deals extra damage to his head, and it also helps counter the poison cloud. Two, the head of Torment is terrifying, constantly applying true fear on your guys. The only way to stop it is by hiding your champions with the veil buffs. Three, the head of Mischief loves your buffs and wants them all for himself. It targets the champion with the most buffs, then steals them and spreads those stolen buffs. It's a nightmare! What I like the most about this game is that they're constantly updating it with amazing PvE content. Oh, and if the biggest, baddest boss in the entirety of mobile games isn't enough for you, there's more. Raid's also giving away a super limited edition champion to every new player in the game. It's eSports legend and Navi superstar, Simple. Between now and January 28, 2022, Simple's limited edition champ is available for free to both new and old players in Raid. All you have to do is log in for seven days between now and January 28th, and he's yours. There's seriously never been a better time to get started. Hit the link in the description or scan my QR code and you'll get an epic champion, Virgus. 200,000 silver, one energy refill, one EXP boost, and one ancient charm. All this treasure will be waiting for you right here. But it's only available if you log in in the next 30 days and for new players. Once you're in, you can find me in game under the name Mobile Gamer. If you're fast, you can join my clan. And it's that easy. Just click the link in the description and I'll see you in game. All right, let's jump right into the state of the game. We're going to talk about the recently added game modes. Let's talk about Pocket Dimension, which just happened uh, last weekend. Uh, still how did, going on. Still, still going, going on, yeah. Yes. Uh, what do you think, man? I think this was one of the better new things that they've come out in the game in a long time. I mean, this is, was well-received. Yeah, I mean, I got two thoughts. As an event, I thought it was awesome. You know, the teal gear, the rewards, yeah. some challenge, some different, some variety in the game. I thought it was awesome. And then when you when you take in the milestones for that, very easy to obtain. Didn't really need to hoard. Very accessible as far as the milestones, but as far as the character release, I thought it was very, very stingy. What was 126 shards yeah. total, which which I think is the lowest that that I can remember as far as a event release character, so or a, a character release. So that part yeah. I didn't like, but I, I but the event itself I liked it. I like Pocket Dimension. I hope they they find more ways to make this more inclusive for newer mid game players. Get them shards for these characters. Yeah. And they maybe hold off on some of these teal gear and stuff towards the end because the people that have these bigger rosters need that stuff. So yeah. I hope they, they figure some things out. But I thought as a as a event is awesome. Yeah, there was a lot of people that didn't have let's say like a mega red, and they were posting on Reddit about the difficulty being challenging but yet they were still able to finish it and they were really happy with the event and then even people that had like the bare minimum requirements which was five characters at level 65 which was kind of a screw up and we'll talk about that too and yeah but they were able to get through like a handful of nodes I mean, some people said they got through three another person told me that they got through five and they were just yeah. at the bare minimum and so it seems like there was something for a lot of different players uh what was terrible about it was yeah, this was the character release for. Yeah. Now you you you're running Scarlet Spider right now at how many stars? What four stars? Uh, four red and four golds right now. And how are they hanging up? And how do they compare to your symbiotes? 
Uh, they, they are probably about three or 400k less than my symbiotes. And we're not in Doom 2.3 like you are, but in Doom 2.3, very way easier than the symbiotes yeah. and way more reliable i'm not having to be like oh shoot that was a bad note anti-venom died i gotta reset the whole note yeah they i don't have to do that. i'm one shotting everything with them and, and yeah. way less power so they are performing very very well yeah i was able to one shot all three of the nodes with six hundred and nineteen thousand power Ooh, and that's doom 2.3 2.3 yeah so Ooh. they 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 have oh they, so i think that that as far as playability, the the limited number of shards that you could get, you know, by just playing the game normally without spending money is fine, right? I mean, a four star, yeah. a four star is fine. A five star would be better. Uh, the real question is, is how terrible is this going to be if this is a legendary unlock? Very, very terrible. Or well, it, it it it's it's not going to allow for you to play players to unlock whatever the next legendary if they are the legendary unlock and you know that that's that's you know on the first iteration how many how many free to play players should get it i, I don't know what number that is but it should be it should be a small percent of free to play players that are are that are able to unlock a legendary on the first run especially if you've been playing for a while so right um that may be an issue but um yeah the, the good thing though if it is a legendary unlock that means that these web warriors become farmable and you'll have an early game solution for Ultimus and some of these earlier raids, and then uh, get a team that you could also use in the Doom raid. So, yeah. double-edged sword if it is a legendary yeah. unlock. We'll have to see how that plays out. It just seems that they're getting stingier and stingier with new character release, you know, with the amount of shards that they give out. Uh, and they were definitely stingy on Scarlet Spider. Uh, then let's talk about uh, the tower mode and the, the changes that they want to bring to the tower mode. Uh, they had some feedback and they said they wanted to change two things on it. The first thing that they wanted to say is that they wanted to have, include slot squad select filters that hides characters that are in cooldown. Is that something that you're going to use or something you think that's going to be good for? Oh, yeah, yeah. How many times I was going through my roster, I'm like, I can't tell if this character has been used or not. And, and you can't filter it because right. they were all all through the throughout the thing. I just, you know, put them all on the bottom, gray them out so you can't select them and, and it'll be better. So I'm glad that they're they're taking the feedback from the community because that was that was one of my biggest complaints uh, personally. I know other people needed more content newer players and game players need more content yeah. but the the, the cooldown that that was that was my main issue and they're correcting that so. i think i think good, the main good on them. i think the main of the issue with the entire event was that uh, unlike pocket dimension you know a lot of people just weren't able to get anywhere and they were kind of screwed uh depending yeah. on what their collection power was it says what will make it into the next version will be more lower levels at the start of avengers tower to make it more friendly to new players and more levels at higher levels for veteran players. So they're talking about expanding it both ways. What I think that was the number one complaint. And I think what most people were like, yeah, I could get through like three stages. What fun is that? Or I could only get to stage X, Y, Z. And then, then they were done and they were like, kind of like, you know, they were, they were shut out from the vent, right? Yeah, but Skullplay's got to remember, this is a four year old game. So you got players all different levels at this game. When they design these events, you, you, players should be able to play it, play some of this new content and not just play some of this older content like we're going to talk about. So I, I'm glad they're making this a little more accessible or a lot, hopefully a lot more accessible to the newer players. And then for the end game players that got to that level 75 and could do nothing for the next couple days. I mean, this this helps them as well to chase and then really clarify which what is the ranking one, two, three, where there's everybody at 75 like what what is the best ranking for this so right right yeah, I, I like i like they're listening to community this is this is positive i think and all so this and and what was your thought towards the terror mode would you would you want to see terror mode replace blitz yes yes blitz is boring tower mode i gotta think it's fresh i'm actually playing these battles and day one and two is a pretty grindy but after that after you get through a certain amount of stages there's not many battles i could do because the battles are hard so i i like the game mode i, I like it i like i think yeah, before we talk about Blitz, let's talk about the new game mode that is supposed to be slated to come to the game, and that is Grand Tournament. We don't know a lot about it, but what are your thoughts about Grand Tournament? Maybe explain what your expectation of the game mode to be like. 
Oh, I, I think I think you're better to talk about this because yeah. you played Star Wars Galaxy Heroes <laughs> in Grand Arena. I haven't played that, and uh, from what everybody is saying, it's it's going to be very similar to Grand Arena in Star Wars Galaxy of Heroes, which which most people enjoy. Yeah. Um, and I know content creators have fun doing those battles, so I'm looking forward to that from that perspective. But honestly, I don't understand how it plays well, anything it's, like it's that. A, it's, it's a, like a it's, one one on one war. Is yeah, that, it's basically a one versus one yeah. war. Is you know like right now in war you set up your defense. Well, imagine if you were going to play against you know another person and you both have your defense laid out. You know that's that's the general idea. We don't know the exact format. Uh, there's a lot of things they could do to get it right, and there's a lot of things they can do it wrong. But I got to say, if they do what, it right, it could be the best game mode in the game. And uh, what, what are some right things about that that uh, that Star Wars Galaxy of Heroes did in that game mode that you would like to see? Initially, they they had a lot of problems with matchmaking, and they eventually got the okay. matchmaking right. So I think you could do matchmaking wrong. I think you could do matchmaking right. I think that uh, okay. PvP content lives and dies by matchmaking done correctly or incorrectly. And then the second thing that's going to determine whether or not it's success or not for me is if it's efficiency based versus time based. Right now, we have a time-based system where yeah. you get points for finishing it the fastest, and you have to start at a certain time, and you have to pick a time zone, which fractures everybody. Everybody in the world is placed into a different time zones, or it selects different time zones, as opposed to efficiency, where you know, like I get more points if I attack your five-man team with a two-man team. So if I can go in with a two-man team and destroy oh, your okay. five-man team, then I get more points. So then every battle, you're taking an assessment of how can I make this most succession? Can I can I two-man this? Can I three-man this? Can I four-man this? You know, and then you you also lose points by how many of your characters die or survive. So if you have mm. all of them, if you if you you go in at a five versus five and you end the match with only one player left, then you get less points if you were with all five. So that's uh, the difference between efficiency versus what we have right now in Alliance Wars, which is a... That's sounds way more fun than alliance War. it's way more fun, <laughs> fun. I, I i don't know how much i'm going to complain if they don't do that but uh because i have a feeling they're not going to do that i i well, did, they did say that we get to test it so hopefully we're going to find out soon hopefully. yeah hopefully find out soon let's talk about the blitz uh blitz we oh. had we had let's talk oh. about we're gonna oh. we're, we're now we're gonna talk so so what's happened so far in this video is we've have two new game modes that were relatively well received and they're going to make improvements on one of them. One of them turned out okay. And then we're getting another game mode here in the next, I don't know. What do you think grand tournament? Do they even say probably the next three months or so, right? I think, I think uh, within the next month or two, we'll, we'll be play testing it. And then maybe another month or two after that is when they'll release it. In the okay. Game. So yeah. Three, three, four months is probably, what probably we'll be getting more information shortly. So, what I want to talk about now is the existing game modes in the game and are you having fun playing them? And we're just going to kind of go through the different ones. Now, we talked about uh, tower mode, right? Avengers Tower possibly replacing Blitz. Blitz has been real controversial lately. I don't know if you've been tracking the scores on Blitz, but boy, we just had two Ghost Spider uh, Blitzes end and the 1% was in the mid-50s. We're talking like 52 yeah. million, 51 million. I don't know the exact number, but the numbers were high. And there were people that got over 50 million, but not over, you know, and they were, they missed yeah. the cutoff. Uh, how are you feeling about Blitz? What's your thoughts about Blitz? Boring. It's just grind. It's not fun. I've, these, these type of game modes that are just grind and not adding fun to the game, I think, should be either reevaluated or removed from the game and re remove the importance. And it wasn't that much of an issue before we got this ghost better bliss because we haven't had a character release since uh i guess i guess cloak and dagger but the official one would be maria hill because 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 does that but yeah it's 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 boring and it's outdated and it's, it's just about grind and uh yeah remove it remove it as, i'll be fine with it remove it yeah or, I, I wouldn't or don't use it as a character release method use it as a way to give more players older players shards of these characters that they want you know i'll, I'll be fine with that but just not releasing characters this way to, that grind is not fun yeah i hope they could make it so that it's still beneficial to people that want to play it you know like if they want to release like hella or something that way and then people are yeah. like hey i need hella you know, I, I, I'm guessing that you're not really excited about Hella Blitz, but a lot of people no, might. No, but people that need it would be awesome for them, right? Right, 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 right. Now, let's talk about Alliance Wars. Now, you, you've 
you've had a mixed mixed history with Alliance Wars. How are you feeling about Alliance Wars right now? Uh, I'm glad I'm in a casual alliance because because <laughs> that time based thing we don't we don't care about it. You got to get your attacks in and. That's pretty much our requirements in our alliance, and that has made war a lot more fun for me. Uh, having that pressure on, you know, getting being on at a certain time, and sometimes I got real life that gets in the way, or I miss an attack, and having that pressure on there, it, it takes the fun out. But now playing it casually, I'm having a lot more fun. You know, just right. going into the attacks. Sometimes I still get frustrated with these heroes for higher battle, but outside of that, I'm having fun with war. Yeah, and, and I gotta, I gotta say, I want to talk about two things. I want to talk about one. Yeah, I'm playing right now in a hyper. Uh, competitive alliance where you know we got to get on right away and do all of our attacks right at the start of the war and we're tracking our losses and we're trying not to have any losses at all actually you know what I mean and you know as far yeah. as dropped attacks and things like that but something I've been hearing a lot lately from other players are like well unless you're in the you're in a top 10 alliance you know it doesn't really matter if you win or lose because it's this whole entire elo system where you know, if you start winning a bunch of matches, they eventually just match you up against somebody that you can't win against and you just get beat down. So, like, there is no upside to winning a lot because then they just yeah. pair you against some alliance so much bigger than you that'll just smash you into the ground. Uh, what's your take on that? I mean, I, I, I guess that's an efficient ELO system, right? Because uh, it, it, in reality, it should be 50% win and 50% loss in an ELO system. Yeah. Is that the right system to have for this game? I don't know. Like maybe because of the four time zones that they had, but matchmaking, matchmaking is kind of a whatever. It yeah, just... it kind of makes it feel like what's the point? If if you're gonna just if just by playing better you're gonna get paired up against somebody, you know, and and, and that's not necessarily true. Like I said, in the top ten alliance, where that's where I'm at. I'm in. A, I think our alliance is the fifth largest, so. It's a little different there where we have we have a competitive match, but we but largely we don't even have that many competitive matches. We have like one committed competitive match per season. We have one that we auto lose. We auto lose to the largest alliance in the game. And then we have two relatively competitive matches. And then the rest are just like we auto win. And it's mm. it's it's it really as far as like super on your toes, it's only one uh big war her war season which is not that exciting really if you think about it i guess half year wars are competitive so maybe I guess, I guess i guess that's how elo is supposed to be working yeah <laughs> I maybe i don't know it, it seems like a weird system i don't know how i feel about it i think a lot of people are not taking it that seriously i think what's happened is and we're going to talk about raids is, and raids in arena is that uh arena was always like the most important game mode of the game and then suddenly raids suddenly became a lot more important right and yeah. people and people kind of pushed alliance war out of the way and have focused on 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 raids so what's your take on raids we got two different raids we've got both the gamma and <laughs> we got the 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 greek, greek. raids the and then we've greek. got the doom raids what do you think about the raids <laughs> All right, greeks are boring greeks are boring man I, I i put that thing on auto and and just go and it's not fun that's not what it's supposed to be the raids are supposed to be a puzzle that you that you solve and it's fun solving this puzzle and if it's and if, if you're trying to get your characters up to beat that challenge and you see that progression that's what's fun about the raids the greeks haven't been that for a long long time uh doom 2 is still a challenge and i think it's it's a challenge because they, we don't have all the characters in the game uh that that we need to beat that note those nodes like our tech team. Well, it is double me. All right, the, the tech the tech nodes are sucky, but Doom, I'm, I'm still having fun because it's challenging. I have to play that. But I would have a lot more fun in Doom 2 if I didn't also have to do these gamma raids or alpha or beta, whatever they come out with, because that's boring. Yeah, it, and the rewards are bad. And yeah, not so what, what do you think they should do with those? Uh, put the put the gamma on full sim. Like if you've beat it X amount of times, boom, you just you just clear it, clear your nodes, and um, done. Yeah, I don't even want to auto it. I just want it sim win, sim win, sim win. I've already done that so many times. I yep. it shouldn't even be a question. Just give me the rewards. Keep the rewards because that would be a go bad if they take it away all, all entirely because we get, that's where we get gold and uh, gear and things like that. But put it in sim. Just put the time somewhere else into fun game modes and and remove this auto stuff. Yeah. I, and I'm, I'm a big fan of the doom raids. I think they're great. Uh, they're not, they're not really completable. And, you know, we do 2.3 every day and it's definitely very challenging. And then we've also got the, the gamma raids, which I think just need to be simple and moved on. 
What do you think about Arena? How are you feeling about Arena right now? I like Arena. I like I like the like the two Eternals and then something else, or maybe even sometimes Infinity Watch, based on what the what the person is doing on defense. Uh, it's 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 fun. It's in the best place I think it's been in a while. When it was Infinity Watch versus Infinity Watch, it was boring. When it's Black Order versus Black Order, it was boring. But when we got this soup of different characters, good characters, Eternal and some others, uh, and having to choose your offense team based yeah. on what they do on defense, I think it's a good place. I think Arena is a very good place. So, uh, Scopely, do not release the rest of the Eternals and make them yeah. Arena characters. <laughs> <laughs> that'll, that'll just make us back to where we were before. Yeah, and I, I really, I do like the arena. So, like, if you look right here, I just pulled up my arena screen, and then there are three very different teams, and I know how to beat each one of those three teams. Like, they they require a different team to beat them, and that requires a little bit of thinking. Everybody is trying something different. Nothing really holds on defense, but if you just lo lo you know load into battle and don't check your team, you'll lose. You know you've done that before. I know you. Unless unless you randomly pick, you have the right team set up from your past. Yeah. Match. But the the other thing I want to mention, the Eternals. These are fast battles. The Infinity Watch took almost five minutes per battle. It's not the Infinity Watch versus Infinity Watch mirror matches were long. So much better these are these are like very quick battles so the i i like arena it's a good state right now yeah it's a, i think it's the best it's been in i just don't like the cookie cutter teams i'm really annoyed with like infinity watch versus infinity watch or, or that empowered Spiker. thanos that's what did it the empowered thanos did it man <laughs> yeah i hope they never go back to that i really do because i'm not a fan and then lastly what do you think about rta rta is kind of like the stepchild ah. here on this game. My goodness, what, what are we supposed like to do with Greek. it? It's like busy work. It's not fun. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, I put, I do a minimum of two RTA battles a day, put that thing on auto and forget about it. That's it. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know. What do you think they should do with this system? Because it seems kind of weird. They've definitely moved they, the battle pass away from new character releases. They've made it for costumes and teal gear and kind of forced you to do it if you really want the teal gear, right? This is not worth it. You know, you know how many days of grinding you need to do just to get these rewards? Is that worth it? And you got to buy it? It's all right. They, they, they should they should they should disassociate this with the real time arena, maybe tie it to a new and fun game mode and uh, remove the two matches of RTA in the past. I mean, uh, that we have to do on our daily objectives. That's 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 what I would do. With it. Take it out of importance. People that want to play it, because I know there are people that strategize and play it for fun. Cool. Oh, uh, you know Let what? Play. I, I, and, I, and don't make it a requirement. I have some fun if there's if Adam Warlock is not there. The problem I have is that when Adam Warlock is available, the matches are super super long, and I don't have any fun because how many times you have to kill? It just takes forever to get through Adam Warlock. Yeah, and like if you're or, playing non Adam Warlock versus non Adam Warlock teams, I can actually have some fun. But Adam Warlock ruins all the fun in RTA for me. And then Blitz is still Blitz, right? That's just where we're, you know, we're back to where the, at least, you know what's strangely enough though, this is probably the best it's ever been because you get at least you get to choose between RTA or Blitz, but it still doesn't seem very much, doesn't seem very good. No, they, they, they should have, this is how it should have been released and they should have been improving on this instead of releasing it at bad crap state. And then they made improvements on that and getting to where it was. So yeah, that's, I don't yeah. like it. All right, so wrapping it up, how are you feeling about the game? How are you feeling about 2022 for Marvel Strike Force? I am optimistic. I'm optimistic for this game. Kind of uh, pretty much the same place I was last week uh, when we did that full roundtable with the Remedix and I. Uh, it's, I. I feel they have a plan. I feel that they're reacting or they're they're communicating more. You know, the the things that we didn't like at, at Tower Mode, they're addressing in the next iteration. They know what the pain points were. Uh, they had some miscommunication with Pocket Dimensions. The rewards weren't very good, but I'm glad that they communicated and said, yes, we screwed up on this. I, I like the communication. So I think that the devs are hearing us. I feel that they have a plan. So I feel that even with a lot of the negatives in the game right now, I feel that uh, very optimistic going forward in 2022. Yeah, I agree too. I'm, I'm very hyped. All right, let me know what you fear hyped for 2022. I know I am. I, I think this is probably like we do this almost every year. And I think this is the first year where I'm like, I'm actually pretty hyped for 2022. I don't yeah. know if I felt that way the year before and the year before. Yeah. An apocalypse is coming too. Yeah. Apocalypse. Woo. All right. <laughs> Let me know what you think in the comment section. Alrighty, guys. Thanks for watching. Keep on gaming.